Hey, Stacy, our friends at Moink are at it again. I love Moink. Do tell. As you know, I never miss out on a Moink delivery, including grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and wild-caught Alaskan salmon. And now they have a new limited-time offer that gives new subscribers free ground beef for a year. That's a year's worth of casseroles, stews, burgers, meatballs, and more, all delivered straight to your door. Amazing. Isn't it? You cannot beat the convenience. Moink makes it so easy to eat quality meat. Their animals are raised outdoors, their fish swim wild in the ocean, and Moink meat is free of antibiotics and hormones. We're talking the highest quality meat at fair prices. It's true that the convenience is great, but honestly, the best part is that Moink meat just tastes better. Join the Moink movement now. Sign up at moinkbox.com slash D-I-J-F-Y and listeners of the show get free ground beef for a year. Pick what meats you want, change what you get each month, and cancel any time. That's delicious ethical meat delivered to your door plus free ground beef for a year at M-O-I-N-K box.com slash D-I-J-F-Y. Short for Didn't I Just Feed You. Hey friends, it's Megan and Stacey with a holiday ask. This is not about leaving us a rate and review. Though, by all means, feel free to do that too. (laughs) Yes, of course, we'll take those. But this is actually something even more important. We've put together a listener survey to learn more about you and what you want from Did and I Just Feed You. As we grow Didn't I Just Feed You, it's important that we do so in a way that meets your needs. And instead of guessing at what those needs are, we'd like to hear about them directly from you. From all of you. If you're listening right now, go to didn't I just feed you.com backslash survey and take five minutes to tell us more about yourself. We promise it won't take more than that. We know that your time is precious. The survey will be live for three weeks. And as a show of thanks for your time, we're going to select three new people every one of those weeks to get their choice of a prize. We've got three months worth of community membership, a cookbook bundle, and a week's worth of coffee on us to choose from. The most important people in the Didn't I Just Feed You community are you, our listeners. We truly can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. When a gift comes with having to like return dishes or coordinate with tons of people, then it feels like you're not really taking something off of people's plates. Because the idea is that that's what you want to do. You want to take something that they have to think about all the time off of their plate to create space and room in their life during a time where it feels like they have very little. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You, a podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Stacy. And I'm Megan. Before we jump into today's conversation, let's take a second to talk about our listeners community. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> it's free. It's easy to join. All you need to get in is to share your email with us, and that gets shared with nobody else. We'll put a link in our show notes to make it easy for you to join, or you can go to the community page on our site. Or go to Instagram, where we are at Didn't I Just Feed You. The link is always there. And outside of our free group, we also have a supporting membership. And if you're able to comfortably support Didn't I Just Feed You and our efforts to publish free weekly episodes, we would love to have you there as well. Supporting members can pledge their support monthly or annually and receive awesome perks, including two exclusive episodes every month. We used to call them minis, but they're definitely not mini. (laughs) live events, which are also not many, lifetime access to our private Instagram feed, and a huge quarterly giveaway. Okay. Speaking of giveaways, Megan, <laughs> it's not really quite it's a giveaway. It's not quite the same thing, it's but quite, okay. It's gifting. It's yes. giving. Tis the holiday season. We're sort of like in the middle of it, kicked off with Dia de los Muertos and Diwali and Halloween and Thanksgiving and Hanukkah all the all of the holidays with more coming up. We kind of just wanted to take a break in the middle of it all. And instead of just talking about cooking for yourself, cooking for your family, gift giving, all that good stuff, how can we cook and take care of others. It's almost in that vein, a companion to our gift guide. 
We're I saying love that. yes. The one of the best give, gifts that you can give this year is your time to feed others. Yes. Yay. I love that. So, you know, I think that this is a really important subject to both of us. We both love taking care of others, gifting food, hosting, which is kind of a form of feeding and gifting yes. to others, right? But I think we also try to be really careful about making too many suggestions that make people feel even inadvertently like guilty or like they should be doing more yeah, for others, overwhelmed. overwhelmed, any of that stuff, because we know that just kind of making it through yourself with your own family is hard enough. I think especially the last couple of years. Yeah. So at the same time, we feel like if you find yourself in a moment where you have the bandwidth, whether, you know, that's the budget to just, you know, go to a local restaurant and buy a whole bunch of food that you can deliver to someone or the time. It's a really beautiful thing to do. And I think it does pay off dividends and makes you feel fulfilled. So we just kind of wanted to touch on the subject. Yes. And I want to jump right off of what you just said about like going to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. If you're able, I want to say, you know, we're going to talk about how to feed others, how to use meal trains. We're going to give you a ton of ideas for meals, but I, and we probably won't be this explicit as we're giving meal ideas, but like any of these things that we're suggesting, you could one, just be the coordinator. Like you don't actually have to yes. cook all the food, but you could sign up with a meal train app and get that coordinated for someone who needs to be fed this season or in future seasons. They just had a baby. They just lost someone in their life, whatever it is. Maybe they just moved. That's a big transition too. And then the second piece is any of these meal ideas you could totally buy. Like not, it doesn't have to be restaurant quality. You could go to the grocery store and make an assembly meal of things. Like we love to cook and that is a form of self-care for us sometimes. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> but we recognize that it's not true for everyone. And especially like if it's a busy season for you, showing up with a Costco pot pie is still feeding 100%. your friends. I mean, honestly, even showing up with just groceries. So don't let perfection get in the way. If you know someone is struggling or could just use a little extra support while you're at the grocery store for yourself, picking up some groceries for someone and dropping them off, you know, that's okay. Of course, it'd be great if you could bring over like, you know, a lasagna and a tray of mac and cheese all ready to be cooked. But even just picking up groceries for someone can save them time. Yes. Have you had the experience of other people feeding you like when the boys were born or anything like that? <laughs> Not really. Really? Isn't that sad? I mean, there. I must have, you know, that it's, yeah. they we're talking many years ago. I'm sure that that's not the case, but I think that people feel weird about cooking for me. Even when I go to like people's homes for a dinner party that I've been invited to, someone almost always says something. Yeah. At the table. Like, oh, well, uh, I'm like, actually, like, half I'm so of my happy to be fed. Yes. Like, yes. Also, half of my home meals are <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like Tracy, you're not supposed to be telling people that we are running a professional food <laughs> podcast over here. Come on, Why? Hide that. We don't need the truth. I I'm saw the most amazing tweet from Samin Nosrat. She must be working on a new cookbook or something, a new project. And she <laughs> Instagrammed or tweeted saying like, uh, it was a text thread between her and another friend talking about like what an awesome cook she is. Basically, she alluded to the fact that like she cooked pasta. She was like, oh, the key is to drain it and leave it in the colander. So it becomes one big rubbery <laughs> clump. <laughs> And then to dress it only with olive oil and forget salt or, you know, something along yes. those lines. Basically, she was suggesting that she made a really super <laughs> dinner for herself. And I was like, I can relate so hard. <laughs> to that. I had I had one week recently where it was just like a run of bad meals. Yes. So <laughs> the, the, the point being that we both <laughs> cook meals for ourselves. But also, I want to say this because I want to share this because. When I had Emmett, so I had like a toddler and a newborn. 
one of my friends who actually is like immunocompromised. So she was nervous about like coming around us and getting herself sick or yes. getting Emmett sick. She just Instacarted stuff yes. from Costco. And at first, and like it, I said, the Costco pot pie, because at first I was like, crap, she sent like a giant pot pie and there are only four of us and two of us like don't like a toddler doesn't eat that much i was like this is crazy and then also brownie bites which that was just like a no-brainer so great but honestly i cooked that pot pie one night and then it fed us for like an entire week and when you're that like hungry and sleep deprived you don't care you'll eat the same thing over and over yes, again totally. yes i reflecting back i think that i was one of the first people in my peer group to have a baby so i don't think anyone really understood quite how hard it was yeah so no one thought no, to bring but also i don't know that we were cooking i don't know yeah you know what i mean like i was still like in new york city my friends were still going out like super late i don't think we were in that phase of life yeah and you mentioned this occasionally when we're talking about things like pizza or I don't know, Thai food, where it's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it at home because I can just go out and get it. Is there something like in New York where it just feels like there's more access to like cheap and easy food so people don't necessarily think about setting up a meal train? Yeah, I wonder, you know, we recently um, set one up at our school. A family at our school was struggling with some significant health issues of their youngest child. And I know that that was really meaningful. It was a long-term thing. Yeah. So it was like months of organizing meals for this family because it does get expensive to get takeout over and over and over. So yeah, I think that's true that in like the short term, people aren't really thinking about food in that way. And people don't, prep tons of food here. I don't think, you know, it's a joke that New Yorkers don't even use their kitchens. Um, <laughs> so what a treat that would be. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, I want to jump off something that you said there, yeah. which is that you guys did a long term meal train, yes. which is brilliant. But I also want to shout out even like doing a meal train, not, maybe not right after someone comes home from the hospital or right after someone loses their parent or whatever it is, but doing it like a month later, yes. bringing it, not even a full meal train, but like yes. bringing a meal because it is this thing where like, right when you bring a new baby home, everyone's bringing you food and you're like, holy crap, what are like, how are we going to eat this all? And then like three months later, you're still, now you like transition back to work and it's still crazy. You're still sleep deprived. And now you're like, I would love to have any of those meals again, needing like a little bit of support later on after. I think that's so incredibly smart. I also think about this in terms of just reaching out to people in general and kind of emotional support. Yes that people are inundated in the moment when something's happening. And I just know when I've had those moments when my father passed away, when I've had kids, it's so difficult to process that it feels nice, but like all, it's all coming in at once and it's all a uh, haze. And that actually the people who took time to reach out a couple of weeks later, of course, you always want to touch base immediately, but people who are like, Hey, I know it's been a couple of weeks just checking in. That's when you have like room and space to like process. And if you really do need someone to lean on, you have a little bit more of your wherewithal and your bearings to, yes. you know, tell them what you need or to talk to them. So I think that's really a really excellent point. You know, my mom's work is in bereavement and grief. Yes. And like she really, she wrote her PhD thesis about like how there's no public education around grief. And also the thing that we think of grief as always like loss, yes. but even big transitions yes. like moving or having a baby, baby do have grief interwoven into them. And so I think there's something just really beautiful about you sharing about your dad and people checking in later because... It, it, it's like, it doesn't necessarily it's stop when you like go back to work or, you know, when you're settled in your house, like there's still 
grief and it's a part of our everyday and we don't really talk about it enough. I'm so glad that we're talking. Uh, this is how we're framing the conversation because it is the holidays. It is a really good time to feed others. The holidays are a difficult time for many. And, yes. you know, it, again, it's not necessarily grief, but maybe just as simple as, you know, a neighbor or a friend who lost their job and is just feeling stressed yeah. about, you know, gift giving or hosting or whatever it might be, like the shifts that that's caused in their lives. But hopefully this episode will be useful all year round. Yes. Okay. I mean, I think we could talk about the number of situations where a meal train would be good. Like it can be loneliness. It can be people who don't have a home base to go home to for holidays, but also maybe don't want to be like folded into your crazy yep. chaotic holidays yep. too, right? There's so, and then like, you know, those that, invites we've all yeah. given them. You're like, you can't you can come, come over. <laughs> There's going to be a big ass dog. That's going to try to jump on you. Probably one of the kids is just going to eat dinner rolls. There's going to be, you know, fingers in the mashed potatoes, whatever it is, but let's talk about like, like, at your own risk. In yes. <laughs> let's take just a few minutes and talk about the idea of what a meal train is yes, because we assume that that, that like people know what that is. So a meal train is this idea that like one person helps coordinate your community around feeding another family or another person. It can be really simple. Like you can have an email thread or a text group text message. You could create a Google spreadsheet, but now there are apps yes. like there is an actual meal train app, which is really nice because it like lets people put in their email. It sends them reminders that they signed up to provide a meal. It lets you give details about the people that you're feeding, like they have a, an egg allergy or they eat vegan, whatever it is. And also their preferences around like drop off, coordinating drop off, which is another part of it that we can talk a little bit more about, like how to make it seamless and easy coordinating everyone's schedules. The other thing that's really nice about the meal train app is that it also allows you to send gift cards to people. Yes. Like if you just can't show up and they can even like as the receiver of the meal train go in and be like, these are the restaurants that we will use a gift card to all the time. So like it's more beneficial to them. It essentially helps you help them. Yes, totally. Once you know who you're setting the meal train up for, then it's time to actually set it up. So one of the things that we wanted to share is that we think it can be very helpful to split coordinating responsibilities between two people. Because, you know, we said earlier, if you can't cook, you can coordinate. That's great. But if you want to cook and coordinate, it can, it can kind of turn into a, a lot. These apps are really helpful. But just getting all hands on deck is really helpful. And you'll be surprised. There's always someone out there who wants to help. Yes. And it's also a good thing for like busy schedules. I know I helped coordinate a meal train for my brother and his wife when they had their son. And if you're the only person who like has all the information and you get stuck in a yes. meeting where you can't respond to a text and that friend who signed up for Tuesday's meal is like at their door being like, the cooler is not out here. What do I do? If you can't, like, it doesn't, it's not as useful if someone else can't jump in and be like, oh, hey, this is the plan or the cooler's out back or just, it's okay to knock on the door at this time, whatever the answer might be. So I love the idea of coordinating with another person. So, but you're bringing up a really good point. You mentioned that it's important to figure out what the parameters are for engaging with the family that you're supporting. And we just want to take a minute to like really hone in on this because if you have a new baby and you're napping at odd times, or maybe you know someone who's experiencing grief and it's just very your mood, your willingness and ability to engage with other people is sporadic or unpredictable rather, it's important to get a sense of what their boundaries are so that you know no one's left feeling like, oh, well, they're dropping off food and now I have to host or feel a responsibility. This is supposed to be just like pure support. So, you know, what times of day are best, where you can drop things off. You mentioned a cooler that's really important if you don't know that you're going to be able to drop off the food in time for it to go directly into a refrigerator or a freezer. What else? 
I'm like, wait, what else? That's it. Okay. That's it. So just understand those parameters. Like have one person be the contact person for the family so that they're not overwhelmed. Have your backup coordinator, right? Who knows everything as well. And then just really get a sense of what their needs are. And also be sure to figure out the length of time that the meal train is going to be set up for. If it's a week, if it's a month. Because some people are going to want to cook more than one meal. You know, there's always those overachievers that they're like, I'll cook a lasagna and a mac and cheese. and a- Yeah. Or just what you were saying, like the extension of a transition is longer than we think it is, or the lifespan of a transition is longer than we think it is. Or I, my brother and sister-in-law, they were dealing with a baby in the NICU. So yep. they were like at the hospital for months and be and setting the expectation when we sent out the blast email to everyone like hey we got to feed these guys for three months yes can you sign up for more than one night i think is really great yes okay i want to shout out because there are a couple other meal train services there is meal train there's take them a meal there's meal baby caring meals and then also care calendar and i like take them a meal caring candle like all the ones that don't refer to babies as options for people who may maybe they had a miscarriage and that's how you're supporting them like thinking about what tool you're going to use as it relates to the reason that you're feeding your people yes all right so megan let's take a quick break to hear from some of this week's sponsors and then let's jump into tips for planning so that as the coordinator we can help make it as easy as possible oh i got tips i can't wait The holidays are all about creating magic and nobody knows better than us that holiday magic often starts in the kitchen. Also, nobody knows more than us parents that the pressure to create holiday magic at every turn can be totally overwhelming, which is what makes the newest line by KiwiCo the best one yet. Just when we thought we couldn't love KiwiCo more, they have gone and launched Yummy Crate, a fun and easy way to get hands-on with family-friendly, kid-tested recipes that help build kitchen confidence and teach a thing or two about science along the way. Each month, Yummy Crate delivers to your door high-quality kitchen tools, three recipes, and two projects that teach kitchen skills and encourage kids to explore the science of cooking. Everything in the crate is designed to foster a love of science and cooking in kids ages 6 to 14. From experimenting with the effect of pH on dough to designing artistic creations with pancake art, every Yummy Crate takes your meal to the next level with kid-friendly science stories, history, and fun food facts in the Yummy Zine magazine. Before each crate arrives on your doorstep, you'll be provided with an easy-to-use shopping list, which includes alternative ingredient suggestions for different diets, from vegetarian to vegan, dairy-free to gluten-free. And with no commitment, you can pause or cancel at any time. Build kitchen confidence with hands-on experimentation this holiday season with Yummy Crate from KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping with the code D-I-J-F-Y at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com. Promo code D-I-J-F-Y, short for Didn't I Just Feed You. All right, you guys, I'm going to jump back in as your resident tip expert as your <laughs> resident. <laughs> I don't know. Is that really true? Let me give myself another title, <laughs> not just butter queen, but also tip expert. Okay. I am trying to think of a way I want to frame prepping meals for friends and family a little bit like your catering or you're working in a restaurant and let me explain what i mean here in a restaurant you label everything yeah because everything. once it's in the walk-in 27 other people might touch it in a night for whatever reason like masking they're gonna... tape and sharpies are your friends yes so that's my number one rule and for if you're prepping like freezer meals or a lasagna that needs to go in the oven before it can be eaten please attach the instructions. Like don't assume that your friend knows that cookies basically go in at 350 and cook for 18 to 22 minutes. Like even if they are a brilliant home cook when they're whatever struggling, they have a new baby, they're not, they're not going to remember that. So make it easy, write the instructions on the back or tape instructions. And when, if you are able to put the food in the fridge, then also like tape the instructions to the outside of the fridge if you made a paper sheet. 
I think you were clear, but I'm just going to like, you know, yes. hit the nail on the head that as much as possible should be on the food itself. Yes. <laughs> Not a yes. separate piece of paper. I mean, that can work. That can be additional. And in the email or in a text, like put it on the packaging itself. Yes. Okay. This is a big, like personal thing for me. <laughs> was I'm going to just tell you, I had a traumatic experience when Ella was born of like having to coordinate getting casserole dishes back to someone who like I didn't live near and I didn't see frequently. I appreciated them bringing me food, but I was like, wow, I don't want to have to do this ever again. And I don't want anyone else to have to do it. So this is the time to send everything in a recyclable or disposable container. I saw, and we're going to have to try to find it. I think Tracy Benjamin of Shutterbean shared it this week. This great meme, I think it came from like a good news mo movement that I thought was brilliant, which is if you don't want to use like disposable trays or deli containers that you buy and like might end up not being recyclable, Looking at Goodwill or a lo like your local thrift store for containers that can that you don't need back, and the gift recipient can donate if they want to, also is one strategy for making sure that you take the onus off of your gift receiver, food receiver, to return containers. Yes, absolutely. I think this is a big one, and pretty much, I mean, those are the main tips. <laughs> like. You know, I do want to circle back one more time to what I was talking about earlier about being courteous at drop off. And, you know, if the coordinator, if you're joining a meal train and the coordinator hasn't been clear about any kind of boundaries or parameters that the family you're dropping off to has given, reach out to the coordinator, not the family themselves and see if they can find out, you know, and if the coordinator, maybe you're helping people because they're actually in a like a joyous moment. They're just really, you know, they moved into their dream home, but it's just like stressful and unpredictable. Still, I think it's really important to touch base with the coordinator just to make sure that you're not overwhelming someone. You know, it's not always, you did talk about how grief can kind of be a through line in all these like unpredictable ways, even ways that we're not aware of. But I think overwhelm is what we're trying to also avoid here. So, you know, the coordinator can always say, oh, no problem. Just text them directly. They'll let you know. And then, you know. Another small thing it, that's really helpful if you can coordinate with the other person that's helping you coordinate is not making the, the gift recipients in charge of that cooler. Like if you have a cooler that you can just leave out and maybe you can make sure it gets wiped out once a week or something like that is really, I think is really helpful. Again, the whole, like all of this is like giving the gift of food should also not put extra responsibility on exactly. the gift recipient. I think that's really the main point here is that, you know, when a, when a gift comes with having to like return dishes or coordinate with tons of people, then it feels like you're not really taking something off people's plates because the idea is that that's what you want to do you want to take something that they have to think about all the time off of their plate to create space and room in their life during a time where it feels like they have very little and if you're like oh my god megan and stacy this is so much work you're asking us to do a reminder that we're not saying you have to do any of it alone and that you can also give the gift of store-bought things like groceries or restaurants yeah. meals too. And also a reminder that we're sharing tips and ideas for the ideal execution. Yes. I do think that if you cannot take care of all these things and you are worried that what you're doing is creating more work for the family, then maybe check in with the coordinator and it's okay to duck out sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like maybe this isn't the right time for you. Or if there isn't a meal train, but you were thinking, oh, I'd love to gift this family groceries right now. You know, then do check with them if there's no other coordinator. You know, we're just saying that if there is a whole meal train and there are a whole lot of families in the neighborhood or in the family involved, you know, we don't want to inundate people. But, you know, again, just a reminder, perfection doesn't have to stand in the way of progress. Yes. I just know that sometimes I am that person when I get overwhelmed and people try to help me that actually 
it feels less helpful if it's not because I can be such a control freak when I'm overwhelmed that like if I get a whole bunch of groceries and I'm like, well, that's like, I don't have room for those right now or I can't unpack those or like, we're not going to eat that. And now I feel stressed because I don't want to waste that food. Yeah. Or like, we can't leave the hospital right now to deal with the hot food that was left on the porch. It stresses me out. Then you feel like you wasted your friend's time. Yes. Yes. And exactly. So, you know, there, I, you know, we're not trying to make it sound so hard to do to help people, but they're just be thoughtful. Like we're trying to like throw out a whole bunch of little things that you can just create your own little mental checklist where you can kind of check in with yourself, check in with the situation that you're trying to help and like, think about a few things to determine, is this a good idea for me to get involved or is it not? And it's okay if the answer is it's not. And also I love what you said about like just checking in with the coordinator because sometimes the families might have like tons of leftovers. They're still trying to eat through and checking in with the coordinator on a night where you're like, I don't know if I can pull this off. It's going to be like a hardship and stress on me might actually give the family a nice reprieve too yes. from gifted food. Totally. Okay. We got to get into meal ideas. Yes, we I do. Know we this are the plenty, best part. but we get to take one more break to hear from one of our sponsors. Megan, you know that my two obsessions are food and beauty. So I am thrilled to be sharing our latest sponsor, Matter of Fact, a fantastic new skincare brand. We talk about how I lean into minimalism, but I get excited about new products too. I just need to keep my routine simple, which I can do with matter of fact. So thanks to that, I'm hooked too. It's the perfect skincare line for both you and me. Yes. Matter of fact has launched with two patent pending products that have quickly become a key part of both of our daily routines. They're Asorbic Acid 20 Brightening Sea Serum and Minimalist Hydrating Cream. We both use the vitamin C serum once a day and the hydrating cream morning and night. Most days, that's all I use, but I know that you layer makeup on top too. I do, and that feels great. Both products keep my skin looking bright and smooth. They're also light enough that my face doesn't feel heavy with products, even when I'm wearing a full face of makeup. I also love that Matter of Fact Vitamin C Serum is the only one on the market that lasts for up to 16 months at nearly full potency. That saves big for someone like me who isn't consistent with her routine. And all of this is great, but honestly, the absolute best part of Matter of Fact is that they are research-backed while maintaining a commitment to honest, approachable information, which is kind of a rarity in the skincare industry. Proven results plus transparency is our favorite combination, and we're thrilled to have found a skincare line that gives us both. This holiday season, try both Matter of Fact products as part of their Better Together mini pack. You can test drive the whole Matter of Fact regimen to see improvements in the overall look and feel of skin for yourself. And <clears throat> the Better Together pack also makes a fantastic gift. Yeah. Get it for $54 between now and January 1st. Go to matteroffact.com and enter the code D-I-J-F-Y at checkout for 15% off. That's matteroffact.com, code D-I-J-F-Y, short for didn't I just feed you. Megan, they say that this is the happiest time of year, but for me, it's more like the busiest time of year. Oh, same. Sometimes there's so much to do that it's hard to slow down and take in the joy of the season, which is why I lean on tools from meal planning services to organizational apps to help me make this time of year as easy as possible. Same. As you know, shopping and gift giving are one of my pleasures. So this year, I'm using an app called Elfster to help keep me organized and my shopping easy. Elfster is the number one secret Santa app in the world. It helps you create a free gift exchange so that you can organize gift giving with your family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers without stress. I'm using Elster too this year and it's awesome. You just set the date and budget and it literally takes care of the rest, even drawing names for you. As someone who's just moved to cities this year, I especially love that Elster can help organize virtual gift exchanges too. It's true. Just add gifts from brands you love, including Amazon, Etsy, Fanatics, Nordstrom, Sephora, and Zappos to your wish list. Share and you're all set. Everyone gets what they want. Trusted by more than 17 million people, Elfster is like your personal Santa's little helper. Just go to elfster.com or download the Elfster app to get started today. Happy holiday shopping. All right, Megan, 
the best part. Let's just the food part. Fire through <laughs> good ideas. Okay. Okay. So let's start with I want to do breakfast snack, and then we're gonna kind of clump lunch and dinner together. Yeah. Because I do think that some people, you know, we're going to say some ideas and they're like, that's more of a lunch thing or that's more of a dinner thing. Some overlap. But I will just remind people that when you're in a state of overwhelm and, you know, you have kids or maybe you're taking care of older family members, you don't care. You're not thinking about like, well, this is, is this lunch, lunch this food. You're just like trying to sustain yourself. Yes. So don't overthink people. It's about what's easy for you. Some delicious, quick, easy ideas. Also ideas that freeze well, ideas that are easy to reheat and aren't kind of fussy. Um, you know, that, that vodka pasta sauce, creamy sauce that it, you need pasta cooking water to reheat and get back. It's to, not the nope, one. It's not the one. <laughs> right. And that's easy to store. You want to think a little bit about like how you pack it up so that it fits in the fridge and the freezer easily. And you're not like having tons of huge trays. Let's just fly through some ideas starting at breakfast. Yes. Which I am just such a big advocate for not just thinking about, I know dinner is like eat really easy and we, we do it a lot, but like these families need to eat all the other hours of the day. So I love breakfast and snacks and sometimes thinking about what could be eaten like on the fly. On the fly is really important. I think this is interesting because I used to feel the way you did about breakfast too. That like, ah, oh, breakfast is the forgotten stress. <laughs> yeah. And and still it is in some ways. But I do have to say that with older kids who aren't hungry right away, who sleep in and I'm not huge on breakfast, like I can just eat some cottage cheese or a hard boiled egg. Although someone delivering me a whole container of hard boiled eggs would be the best thing ever. Yes, totally. right? <laughs> but I just will say that like maybe thinking about the season that the family is in, the family that you're gifting the food to, you know, that can be another question that you can suggest the coordinator ask. Like, yes. are they big breakfast people? Are they not? Because now dinner really is, I'm back into a season with a 12 year old. It's like and the a, most important it's thing. It's the most important thing because it's not just dinner. It's also second dinner at 11 o'clock for <laughs> Mike and Isaac. You know what I mean? Like I need a lot yes. of dinnery kinds of foods. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to shout out one of my favorite things to bring is freezer breakfast burritos. Oh, Our yeah. frittata breakfast burritos are awesome because you can make a big batch without scrambling a bunch of eggs. We'll link to all of these in, in the show notes. Um, but I think of that as something that like, yes, checks the breakfast box, but like you can eat that at 11 o'clock. Oh, it's yeah. frozen. It's not like hard boiled eggs you where they would dinner. just. Yes, yes, yes. So thinking about double duty meals. Okay. What are some of your favorite breakfast things to share with friends in need. Baked oatmeal cups. I feel like they're little like power pucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that doesn't make them sound appealing, but you can flavor them all different ways. And actually that would be like fun to give like cinnamon sugar or like stirrings or different ways to top it or just yogurt, but like make, you know, oatmeal, flaxseed or egg. You can add both or if they're vegan, just the flaxseed, you can put hemp seeds in there. You can just kind of pack it. If there's no nut allergies, you can put nuts because I just like that, you know, it might not seem super exciting, but you eat a couple of those in the morning and you know, especially for like a new mom, that that's going to like power their day and get their day started off right. Yes. Ditto granola, homemade granola, all those things like about flavoring it, you can make your own granola or like buy something local. And that was one of my favorite treats that someone brought to me when I was born, yogurt and granola and some fruit. I ate on that for so long for like breakfast and then also lunch some days. Nice. Muffins. We have an yes. entire, we have an entire episode on muffins. Because we love them so much. And this snack, one handed, free yes, as well. Yes, one handed. Again, like the oatmeal cups, you can throw in, you know, you can take any recipe and kind of throw in some flaxseed or hemp seeds, anything like that. You can add nuts on top if it makes sense with the flavor profile. And you're adding a little bit more like heft and protein and all that stuff that's going to help power people up. We have a recipe for blueberry streusel muffins 
which are delicious and also work really well with all those add-ins that add a little bit of power to your breakfast or your snack time that we'll link to. I mentioned our frittata breakfast burritos, but like honestly, um, little mini frittatas, which would be easy to grab and go, or just make one big frittata and cut it into pieces that make it easy for them to freeze or reheat individually. Any kind of breakfast casserole is yes. great because that will last multiple days. So, you know, a French toast casserole, any kind of like egg bake is great, whether you do it in mini muffins or in a big pan, you know, that you can cut up into squares and kind of eat on the go or just like reheat individual portions. That's really great too. In that vein, like freezer waffles, freezer pancakes, especially if they have littles and they're just trying to get everyone fed. And then also, this is such a weird thought, but I was going to jokingly say, oh, just like a vat of hard-boiled eggs. Yeah. <laughs> but what if you did like all the fixings for basically like those Starbucks bistro boxes, like some cut up fruit and veg, some hard boiled eggs, maybe little containers of hummus. And that could be breakfast, but it could also be maybe you bake a loaf of bread or you pick up beautiful bread from a local bakery. I love it. And another thing is to take a big vat of hard boiled eggs <laughs> and then on the, um, on the container that you pack it in, label it and have like, you know, even just ideas. It doesn't even have yes. to be a recipe and just say like, egg curry over rice, egg salad, like a couple of ideas just to kind of prompt the person that, oh yeah, these eggs aren't just to like eat on the go. I can also turn them into a very quick dinner and here are some ideas. All right. Okay. Let's talk then about we snacks. jump into lunch. Oh, oh snacks. snacks. Oh, we said, you said we weren't going to talk about lunch, but sorry, the Bistro Box idea also gave me a reminder that Sometimes just like sandwich fixings is a great gift. Like, especially if they have teens, getting a bunch of like deli, turkey and ham and cheese, like already cut and some rolls can be such a gift. Absolutely. And if you have a little extra time, you could do, and you feel like, you know, you don't want to just drop off a bag of these groceries because you, you have the time to spare, like shred the lettuce for them slice the tomatoes, pack it up so that some, some of it, if not all of it, because, you know, some of it won't last if you prep it ahead. So it depends on the circumstance, but just prep it ahead. So it's really just like setting everything out and having people like make their sandwiches and they already have their disposable containers that they can just put the lid back on and pop it in the fridge instead of like unwrapping the lettuce, washing it, shredding it, and then finding their own container to pack it back up. Yes. Okay. Now we can talk about snacks. Okay. Um, we talked about muffins. I think that's great. Granola bars. Uh, we have a recipe for a broccoli cheddar dip, which is delicious. And I love this idea because something like a dip feels like something a little extra and to have it packed with something like broccoli and cheese already. It has a little bit of heft. It has a little bit of nutrition, but it's also delicious. I think is really fun. Also basic dips like hummus or yogurt, you know, uh, I think of like Lipton's onion dip, which for me is a comfort food. I would love that with a bag of chips. Like that would be such a gift. Ah, this is such an important point though, this idea of comfort food. So yes. I've talked a lot about like, I tend to lean into thinking about like, how can I pack in nutrition and heft? Because I want the food that I'm gifting to really maximize you want to nourish them yes exactly that's what it is yeah. but comfort food is nourishing too so especially if there's something that's very deeply emotional going on for any of the people in the family you're gifting think about or maybe have the coordinator ask what their favorite foods are chocolate chip cookies we have yes. a recipe for one bowl chocolate chip cookies dips bags of chips and salsa or I, you know, these are, these cupcakes. are things that make people, yes, yes cakes, cupcakes, cakes, banana bread, yes. or any kind of quick bread that can be sliced. And again, that's like easy to eat one handed, easy to freeze, um, easy. And actually quick breads are really great. Like easy to pack with nutrition too. Oh yeah, definitely. Yes. That's like muffins. So does that cover snacks? 
I think it, yeah, right? I think you so. can always do like nuts, that and like trail snacks. mix. Trail mix. You said granola bars you can make or buy fruits and veg. Sometimes just being cut up is such a huge gift. Oh, that's, I totally, that's like what I was saying about the sandwich thing. Also, if they have little kids, just going to the store and if you can find out what their kids like, because kids are sometimes finicky, as we all know, but just helping them stock up on tons of snacks. Yeah. So that if they're just too tired or in between meals, they can rest assured that their pantry has tons of stuff that the kids can go and just munch on is really helpful too. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's jump into the big ass category of lunches slash dinners. Yes. All around, all purpose meals. I love the idea of lasagna, but I think sometimes that can get like l- ubiquitous, like so many casseroles. So what about like a pasta salad? I love a pasta Some, salad. Yes. Right. Cause you can eat it cold. It can be lunch or dinner. You can pack it with vegetables. You can make it little, dr- a little custom dressing to go on it. It can be allergy friendly, picky eater friendly. We love a pasta salad and grain bowls. Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. Like you would make a whole salad or you would pack components? Both. I think you could do both. I think it depends again on the circumstance. And we do keep coming back to this idea of just like, take a minute as you're planning and thinking about whether or not you're going to get involved and how you can help best to think about the circumstance. But I think you could do both or either where you cook a whole bunch of barley or quinoa or rice. And then think about what you want your bowl to be. Again, like shred the lettuce, chop tomatoes, drain and rinse some chickpeas, or maybe roast them up and then pack them. Roast a chicken or buy a rotisserie chicken at the supermarket, slice it up, and then a jar of dressing. And, you know, you can either give them all those elements, just like we were talking about with the sandwiches, just so it's really easy and a no brainer to pull this already stuffed already packed stuff out of your fridge, put it together and put leftovers back without having to think about a single thing, including a container to pack the stuff in. Or, you know, if you have a hearty grain salad, like I have recently been obsessed with a salad where I just roast squash in the air fryer. Do you call it roasting if it's air frying? Anyway, I cook squash that's already cubed in the air fryer, thinly sliced red onions, barley, sometimes feta if I have it, if not, uh, chopped up prunes, and then a like simple vinaigrette. And barley is a really great grain that will last even once it's dressed. That's going to last a few days. Yeah, it gets actually, I think, more flavorful. I agree. Because it absorbs dressing. Totally. Um, I love all of the, those ideas. Jumping off of like these green bowls and salads, what about soups and stews? Oh, yeah. I personally have been really into the super cubes. We wrote about these in a newsletter recently and th- like being able to freeze portions of soup is so awesome. And I would feel like it's such a gift if someone delivered me like a big bag and it was like, there's broccoli cheddar soup in here. There's chicken noodle soup, there's chili. So like either I can have that for lunches constantly, or it could be like a meal where everyone gets a little bit of what they want in the form of a soup or a stew. Okay. I just want to talk about soups or stews for one more second, (laughs) because I do feel like lasagna, like mac and cheese, that's the kind of thing that you see over and over, but there's so much variety to it. Yeah. You know, so even if someone, a family gets three different soups, just make sure that it's not all chicken noodle. (laughs) And you're good, you know, and also soups and stews can be frozen really easily and they're really easy to reheat and thaw. So I think that's part of what makes them really great. Could we shout out a couple other, I mentioned broccoli, cheddar, chicken noodle, and chili, but what about like pozole? Oh, pozole is so nourishing and comforting. I never know if it's minestrone or minestrone, (laughs) minestrone or minestrone. Remember minestrone? It's minestrone. (laughs) Minestrone. No, it's minestrone. That's a really great one. Um, Italian wedding soup. So I like soups or like an escrow meatball soup. You know, you can get meat frozen meatballs at Trader Joe's if you don't want to make them. I like soups that have a veg component 
and either a meat or pasta component for heft. And then if you get one that has all of that, even better. I also love avgo lemono. So you got freeze chicken. Well? Yeah, you can totally yeah. freeze it because okay. it's not a ton of egg. It's not like egg drop soup. Right. Like the egg gets really like whisked and incorporated into the soup and it just makes it nice and silky. But avgo lemono is delicious and you have orzo and you have chicken and tons of flavor. Yes. What about miso soup? That's a great option. Ooh, and one of those I things love that miso I soup. crave when I don't feel well. A miso soup with a couple of packages of soba noodles to, yes. or rice noodles on the side to, again, give it heft. I love that. Okay. You said meatballs, which I know you Meatball. gave the permission slip already, like grab Trader Joe's, grab Costco. But I, I mean... Making a big batch of meatballs, Rest. par cooking them. Rest. Maybe you deliver them in sauce with a package of pasta and they can either freeze them or cook the pasta and eat them right away. Listen, meatball you're gonna, stuff. You're gonna get me worked up. We have an entire episode <laughs> on meatballs because okay, okay. remember early on I was like, I, I, meatballs are everything. You can do so much that can turn into sandwiches. It can be the meat. You can slice them and then fry them up. And it's kind of like, a, I hate saying gyro, but that's what everybody calls it. <laughs> a gyro. gyro. Um, like there's so much you can do. So yes to sauce and pasta because ultimate comfort very makes it very easy to reheat. There's no other like major cooking steps, but it doesn't have to be. If you can't also make the sauce, maybe give a jar of sauce on the side that they can use with the meatballs or not. And then again, just like we were talking about with the hard boiled egg, get out your masking tape and your Sharpie and just label the package with a whole bunch of ideas for what to do with the meatballs. Yes. Pasta plus sauce to infinity. Yes. Right. Because you could deliver a nice box of, I say a nice, but like whatever, a cheap box of pasta and homemade pesto. It could be like our broccoli stock and spinach pesto. Or your favorite store-bought sauce, like Stacy mentioned, or a specialty sauce, like Not Just or, or Rayo's. And then you could gift vodka sauce, that pink pasta sauce Stacey was mentioning, if it was not homemade, if it was jarred. So yes, I think <laughs> pasta plus sauce to infinity. To what infinity else? and beyond. What about a taco box? <laughs> Does that sound really weird? I actually need to go way back. I don't know if this is the origin, probably not because everybody has had every idea, but it really was a million years ago. And I've seen it on the internet ever since when Sarah Kate, one of the founders of the kitchen where you worked for many years was still one of the primary writers on the site. Yes. She wrote about, I believe it was Sarah Kate. She wrote it about- was putting together a taco box where maybe you make carnitas in your instant pot. Maybe you brown some ground beef and season it. You package it up. You have the shells or the tortillas. You have a salsa all packaged up, but basically all the fixings, just like we were saying about the sandwiches, just like we're saying about the pasta and the grain bowls, where you've already prepped everything. You've packaged everything in containers that they can keep or that are disposable. And you have an instant taco night. Yes. Um, the taco box is very cute. Like Sarah Kate even decorated it. Like it's had stenciled taco box on it. Yes. But yes, you I remember that. It was like a crate, a reused, yes. an upcycled It crate. was like a wine box or yes, a wine crate. Yes. Totally. It was so beautiful. So I just want to write the permission slip of like, it can be all of those things that Stacey mentioned in zip top bags that can be... For the most part, thrown in the freezer with the exception of like lettuce and other some other fresh things, but like cheese, the tortillas, the cooked meat, all of that, if they're like overwhelmed with food, could easily be thrown into the freezer for a future meal. I love like a taco situation. Yes. I love yes, it. Right. Because you know that everyone's going to eat it. It's like that lasagna. It's like that mac and cheese, but it's a little bit different. And maybe other people aren't thinking about it. And yes. something that I want to say, because we're going to link to the taco box, the cute one, that's like more than you have to do. But one of the things that I remember loving about that is that it also had like a little thing of fresh flowers in the box, mm -hmm. right? That you can just pick up at Costco or the supermarket. 
and it had a six pack of beer. So, you know, that might not, a, maybe it's Doritos if it's not beer, yes. you know, if they don't drink or they're teens. But I just love that when you get something that isn't just the food and has like, the completeness of it. it. Yeah, it's yeah. very cute. So only if you have the time and wherewithal. Okay. In the vein of tacos, burritos are great. Oh, Again, yeah. something that's easy to freeze. I can't believe you haven't said it already, chicken lady. <laughs> I <laughs> what about <laughs> sandwich stuff like chicken salad? Oh, yeah. So listen, you think I was not going to get to the chicken? Because <laughs> there's, it's the comfort food. It's the flexibility. A roast chicken is like number one on the list. So if it's a circumstance where you're delivering them dinner for that night, it can just be a roast chicken and roast vegetables, you know, and a salad dressing and salad package, you know, again, like flowers and maybe a bottle of wine. That's a beautiful, like complete meal. Or you can roast a chicken, break it down for them, drumsticks for the kids, shred all the breast meat so they can make something out of it. Or you can just buy a rotisserie chicken at the supermarket and do that. There are just endless, endless possibilities. Yes. And while we're talking about chicken, can we talk about sheet pan meals? Yes. Okay. Sheet pan meals, I they're not my favorite for like freezing or, you know, like packaging up and having them last for a couple of days. But if you're delivering dinner for that night, a sheet pan meal is really, really great because it's easy for you and it's delicious for them. And it's just simple and nourishing. Yes. So as an example, and speaking of chicken, don't we have a sheet yes. pan chicken and winter veg with a maple mustard vinaigrette on the site that I think would be brilliant. Also, if you are gifting in a way, sort of like you were talking about, just show, you know, having groceries, the idea of like prepping something that they could easily throw in the oven at their leisure is also really, I think a really great idea. So maybe you could get them all the components of the sheep pea and gnocchi that we really love. Like you do meatballs, gnocchi, and a bunch of veggies, and you actually like chop up the veggies and let them cook that whenever they need it. Might not be great for new parents, but other people who are like grieving or in a transition, it does give the gift of them being able to cook with more ease and then make their house smell amazing, yes. which can help in the comfort of a many transitions. Totally. Another chicken idea that also works with like a big pork butt or shoulder is any kind of instant pot shredded meal. Also beef too, obviously, but yeah. like just that also gives heft and volume. So again, I'm a broken record. Just think about the situation that you're gifting into. Is this dinner tonight? Or is this a family that's going to need support over the long haul for every single meal? So, you know, we have an instant pot shredded harissa chicken, for example, but it can be anything. It can be a Mississippi roast where you have dinner tonight, but then there are tons of great leftovers that can be used in a lot of different flexible ways. Yes. I love this idea of like doing a big batch of carnitas or Mississippi pot roast, and then also sending stuff that turns it into multiple meals, like a salad kit, yes, some exactly. rolls, some tortillas, um, and just thinking about maybe the way that your friend eats. Like, do they do they want salads because they do tend to eat low carb? It's just like a really easy way to make one thing and then build it out with store-bought shortcuts. Yes, totally. Okay. I feel like we could go on and on. There's things like panzanellas. There's meatloaf. Yeah, we Is are there... going to put so many links on our site. I mean, sandwiches, like a big hero sandwich. A make-ahead pizza panini. So that's a sandwich mm. that just needs that's to be grilled at the friendly. last minute. Yeah. Right. We have a pumpkin chili. We have a white chicken chili recipe. We have just so much stuff. Can I just say one thing before we beg our listeners group for even more ideas? Yes, please. <laughs> this might seem obvious, 
But if you are making a meal for a family, just double it and make a meal for yourself also. It doesn't have to be this thing that you do separately from also feeding your family. Um, You can even make it a future meal or make them a meal and then take yourself out. All of that is permissible. Think about how you're feeding your family and not making extra work. Totally. Yes. And the last thing we won't, we'll put some links to recipes on the site. But don't forget about dessert. This goes back to the idea of comfort and joy that if all you can do is bake a batch of Toll House cookies or make a one bowl of vanilla cake, we have a recipe for Mm, that. Box brownies. Box brownies, especially if they have kids and kids are aware of whatever it is that's putting stress on the family, which we know they're always aware of all of it. But, you know, bringing something I actually recently had a friend just send, a friend who lives out of town, just send cookies from a local bakery to the house for the boys as a treat. And it was so nice for them. It lifted their spirits. I think it was at some point during COVID that was just like hard. They were having a hard time at school or something. And just to have cookies show up at the door from a bakery made them so, so happy. So I think that that's something to think about too. Okay. I feel like this is going to be the best thread in our listeners community. We would love to hear what recipes you love to cook for others. Do you have any meal train tips? Also your own experiences of people feeding you good or bad. I think they could be fun. Tell us by joining our community, or you can always send us an email or leave a comment on Instagram where we are at. Didn't I just feed you? However you want to find us, we want to hear from you. And if you also love hearing from us as much as we like hearing from you, sign up for our newsletter. We promise to only email you helpful information from new episodes to new finds every week. Find the link to sign up for our newsletter on our site or in our Instagram bio. And last but never least, don't forget to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have a minute, leave a rating and a review. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Stay sane and well-fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review.